Okay, we're now moving on to hypothesis testing. And this is kind of the gist of inferential statistics. So we have an experiment. Students were given words to memorize, then were randomly assigned to either take a 90-minute nap or to take a caffeine pill. A couple of hours later, they were tested on their recall ability. We wish to test to see if the sample provides evidence. Okay, provides evidence that there is a difference in the mean number of words people can recall depending on whether they take a nap or have some caffeine. Soon as we're looking at providing evidence, we're looking at a hypothesis test. And we have specific things we need to include in a full hypothesis test. We're actually going to, in the next couple of lessons, just work with setting up the hypothesis test. It's not until the next unit are we actually going to get into the formal hypothesis testing. So the first thing we need to do is set up a null and alternative hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis is actually what we're testing. The alternative is what's going to be true if the null hypothesis is not. And the hypotheses are always set up using the population parameters. The null hypothesis is h sub 0. The alternative is h sub a, although in some texts you might see it as h sub 1. Now we want to see if there is a difference in mean number of words. So it's mean, and we have two groups. So it's mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2. The null hypothesis is always that they are equal. There's no difference in them. There's no change. Now, the alternative, we want to see if there is a difference. Well, it's not specifying a direction for that difference. So we're simply going to use a not equal to, which means that mu sub 1 could be less than mu sub 2, or mu sub 1 could be greater than mu sub 2. Since the direction is not given, we use the not equal to. But we also have to identify what mu1 and mu2 represent. So we have where mu1 is the mean number of words remembered after a 90-minute nap. And mu2 is the mean number of words remembered after taking a caffeine pill. Instead of mu1 and mu2, you could use mu sub n to represent the mean of the nap and mu sub c to represent the mean of the caffeine, but you still have to describe or explain what they represent. 
So if the results of this test are statistically significant, what does that mean in terms of sleep, caffeine, and memory? So it means the sample results are so clear that we can generalize to the population and state that There is a difference between sleep and caffeine in their effectiveness at helping word recall. Now, we don't know yet what statistically significant would be and anything like that, we will get into that eventually. If the results are not statistically significant, what does that mean in terms of sleep, caffeine, and memory? Well, it's going to basically be the opposite. It means the sample Results are inconclusive and we can't tell if there is a difference. Results might just be random chance. So if there is no significant, if there is no statistically significant results, then we really can't tell what it is. Did it really make a difference? Are they really different? Or the difference in this sample may just be random chance, it may just be a fluke, we're not really sure. So let's go through just some writing down hypotheses. Does the proportion of people who support gun control differ between males and females? We want to see if it differs. Well, the null hypothesis would be that the proportion for males is equal to the proportion for females because the null hypothesis is always that there's no change, there's no difference. The alternative, again, it's just a straight difference. It's not giving us a direction of the difference. So it would be the proportion for males is not equal to the proportion for females. Where 
P sub n represents the proportion of males who favor or who support gun control and P sub F represent represents the proportion of females who support gun control. Now for the next one. Is the average hours of sleep per night for college students less than seven? Well, all the ones we've had before, we're looking for a difference between two different samples. Here we only have a single sample, and that's college students. And we're comparing it to a specific number. So the null hypothesis will be that the mean equals seven, again, because Null hypothesis always has the equal sign. The alternative, in this case, we are given a direction, and the direction is less than. So is the mean less than 7? Where mu represents The average number of hours of sleep at night for college students. So even though we only have one parameter, we still have to identify what it represents. 